talking to a precious young lady this afternoon who lives her life so Christ-like that she would probably put a lot of so-called Christians to shame. It's been through things where her heart never once lifted up in resentment, anger, hatred, defiance, fighting, none of that, where the love of God just pours out of her because she realizes, understands, and resonates to the truth. You see, the devil has a plan, and his plan is to use you to destroy someone who has been so hurt they don't even understand what they're doing. And as they're taking things out on other people that have happened to them through the generations, have happened through their life, you have no understanding and you could care less. All you know is poor me. Look what they're doing to me. Look what they said to me. Look what they did about me. All you know is your ability to choose and take offense. Or see, this young lady didn't choose to take offense. She kept taking all the things that was dished out to her by this young lady who has no understanding and does not know what she was doing. <clears throat> and she told her, I don't hate you and I'm not angry at you. I want you to know I'm going to stand right here and do everything within my power to continually be good to you and help you out of this whole situation because Jesus loves you and I love you. You know, that takes a lot. A lot of people don't want to do that. It's it's too hard. Jesus didn't mean for me to take that abuse. Jesus didn't mean for me to do this. Only Christians that the Lord had ever used me when I was younger in the Lord to get saved were the ones that could clearly see Jesus loved them in me. They could clearly see that as right in the middle of their cursing and their swearing and their hatred and their lies and their deceptions, right in the middle of it, Jesus in me spoke the way she spoke, in love. You know, that's true leadership. That is true truth. That is the way we should all go. That is the things that we should all do and be because that is what Jesus Christ did. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If you would have ever walked in the shoes of this woman who is being all the trouble right now, who is doing all the bad things right now, if you would have ever gone through the things that she went through, what would happen to you is you may have fallen long time ago. But I'm telling you right now, this woman that is very difficult to deal with, very difficult to to stand in there and do what is right. This woman has had things on her from the time she was little and she had no understanding of it. But people like you who claim to be Christians will walk away from her and talk about her, go to church and testify against her, go tell people how awful she is, go tell people how, oh, poor you were abused by her words. And, and what chance does a sinner have who is no different than what you used to be. Because these people are exactly what God saved you out of. They are exactly the way you used to be. And because of that, you can't see. Now that you're on the other side, you can't see. You cannot see that it took love, not hatred. It took love, not dealing with demons. It took the love of God to turn you around. But you see, after you got turned around and you made a decision that you are going to continue in dirty works, you are going to continue in corrupting the word of God and corrupting the truth, that you are going to continue, then you engage in fights with these people. You engage with hatred and bitterness and resentment. You engage in going into your prayer closet and believing that God is going to pull them down and destroy them when you should be praying that God finds some way to penetrate that heart through the love of Jesus Christ. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, I'm not talking about demons and devils that have had the Bible for 30 years and still hated God. I'm not talking about the ones that claim that Satan is God and God is, is Satan because God holds you 
to the responsibility of sin until you repent. But Satan gives you the freedom to do whatever you want. And oh, as I said before, that person that says it's so exhilarating, if they want to destroy it, what difference is there between once saved and always saved than a person that picks up the evil and said, oh, it's I'm so free. I am allowed and able to do anything. So if I want to rape someone, I rape them. If I want to kill someone, I kill them. But you're preaching and teaching doctrine that says once saved, always saved. God will never hold it against you. It'll all be all right. God will work it out for you. Where are your brains where God is concerned? Where is your common sense that you cannot see that it's the same level of understanding? It's the same way the lie here is from Satan and the lie here is from Satan. To the extreme in church, to the extreme out in the world, you both live on the same level of understanding. You both pick up the same things. You both do the same things. Over here as a Christian, uh, you're so pious in front of everyone else. But there's such a bitterness and a hatred in your heart against God that you would dare. And don't tell me it's not true because I already know what it takes. God told me it takes someone to hate Jesus Christ in order to take him and twist him and pull him down to man's level. It takes someone to hate the things of God so much that they refuse to go where they're supposed to go. They return into the corruption like a dog turning to its vomit. The Bible says that they do that. And when they do that, they take the doctrine that says you can do anything. It's okay. Corruption is fine. Fine with God. God is going to work it all out and you are going to be all right because you, after all, you are saved by grace. And yes, you are. Are. That grace is favor from God and it has never been intended by God or by Jesus Christ for you to tramp on it because it speaks about it clearly and plainly. Do not tramp on the blood of Jesus Christ because after that you have no more sacrifice for sin. Once you make a decision that you must sin. As a Christian, you must sin when he comes into his heart and mind and you must remain a slave to Satan and still sin. I've got news for you. There's no more sacrifice. You have taken the blood of Jesus Christ and made it ineffective. You made it impossible now for you to be saved unless you completely re repent of this insanity. I wrote a book on it that how insane it is for a person to claim God and lift up their hands and love God with all of their hearts and minds in front of people and then in secret hate him. Do not allow people to control your thinking. Do not allow them to tell you what that Bible says when it's not saying it at all. Do not permit them to invade your body, your mind, and your soul and preach and teach things that Jesus did not finish the job on the cross and defeat Satan because they are giving you a lying gospel. And God said, be cursed, cursed be every gospel that you preach another gospel, curse it. And they're under a curse. And they aren't under a curse from me. They're not under a curse from a preacher. They're not under a curse from you. They are under a curse from God, which is a whole new ball game when it comes to curses. Because when God has that curse, uh, there is you can have a, a million preachers, a million teachers pray for that individual, for them to be set free from that curse, and it will never break. Because when God looks down from heaven and he sees you tramp on the blood of Jesus Christ, you cursed yourself, and that curse come from him. You read it in Isaiah 58, how they love to come before God and they love to talk to him and they love to do this, but to actually do what God wants them to do, they don't do. It takes a hatred of God to twist and turn the image of Jesus Christ into the creature, into the creature that is man, into the creature that would give in to the flesh. It takes a hatred. 
You are a manipulator and you have manipulated the scriptures to such a point that because you are so intelligent that you could manipulate them and grab them out of the air here, grab them there and put them all together, you claim you're rightly dividing. You stand there before the whole world and you have a board there with names of preachers that you laugh at and you mock, mock for the things that they have done. And yet you don't remember the scripture that says, this is not how you bring out the truth. That you must be humble and consider that you yourself could be taken the same way. But you see, you don't do that. You're under the impression you're so much better. You can, oh, look at him. Look how he thinks he got away. Well, you know what? God is saying to you, look at you. Not that that man is right. Because that man isn't. But I'm going to tell you what. If you didn't pray, God told him, why are you rejoicing against this one and that one and not rather in sorrow, crying out because you lose your brethren, cry out because they're doing these things, crying out because it's painful to the heart of God to lose his children to the devil because people like you just feed it and feed it and feed it. The more power that you bring out to hate them is the more power. And those of you that pre preach against certain sins, and you, you, you preach it with such a hatred because of the fear that it's going to hit your children, it's going to, I got news for you. If you are unnatural in your own bedroom in any act, then that unnatural is going to touch your children and you're going to stand there and say, why, why? You are being put to an open shame by everybody that you yourself are doing something unnatural and calling yourself a man of God. Oh, my goodness, can't you see? Oh, I'm sure there are children who get old enough and make choices and do things their own way. It's not always the fault of, of a godly woman or a godly man because there are godly people in this world that would never touch that which is wrong and unnatural. They wouldn't. But it doesn't matter because you gossip sit in judgment, judgment. You people sit down in your board meetings and you decide whether we will accept this one or whether we will accept that one. Because according to the eyes, we don't see their works. We don't see what's happening. We don't see what they're doing according to their works. God says, judge righteous judgment. Do not judge according to to the eyes. That's what he tells you clearly. Judge righteous judgment. With the judgment you meet will be measured to you again. You know, there is a, a, a family that, that had this home that was given to them by the church. And when time come that they had their savings eaten up from from having to take care of the person in the house that was very ill. That time came where they only live on a minimal amount of money. And that home that was given to them by God, they needed to keep. But you see, that judge sits there and says, they don't need that money. You should be given to the poor. They're not poor. Yes, they are. Because they're not poor your way. They're poor. And you're making a judgment according to the eyes. These people have gone into wars. They've gone into places where they could have been destroyed or killed or anything. And they labored to save souls. They've gone into places that you wouldn't lift one little finger to go into. But you... You can sit up there and judge. You never reached out to help anybody, whether it was with money or whatever. But you are a judge. You're allowed to do that. Do you not understand that God is going to judge you with the same judgment? Do you not understand that God is going to find fault with everything that you do the way you find fault with God, with what godly people do? Do you not understand that that is what is going to happen to you? 
I don't know how to get the truth across to you. All I can do is give you these scenarios of truth. Jesus Christ, he did it in parables. He said, I know of a man. Well, I know of a man. I know of a woman. I know of a woman. I know this happened and I know that happened. That is what the testimonies of the Lord have been doing with you is I see and went through these things and that's Jesus. That's what he did. He says, I listen to my father and I say what he says. That is what somebody who has Jesus in their heart does. I listen and I obey him always. Someone who let Jesus Christ in obeys him always. They would never be afraid of your face. They would never be afraid of your judgment. They would never allow you to tear Jesus Christ in them down. There is a difference between loving and giving and doing and letting God says, love them, forgive them, but don't let them. Don't let them tear Jesus Christ in you down. Don't let them tear what God has built up in you. Don't let them make you a, a liar and seem like a liar. You can do that to someone like me all day long. Pour it on and you still can't make it. You know why? He's in here, and he's in here. And him and I went on a journey and worked it all out. And he said, when you do that between God and you, no man can judge you because you've already judged yourself with God. But have at it. Have at it. See. See, look the way you want to, because what is going to happen to you is you are going to be met with the same judgment. Your refusal to do the word as it says, don't touch corruption. Don't go backwards. Don't say it's going to be all right. Don't blaspheme him with your mouth. Don't do those things. I'm not telling you because I hate you. I'm saying these things because God loves you and he wants to waken you up to the truth. It is all about love. When the truth is spoken, it is about love. It isn't about resentment, hatred. It's not about none of those things. The truth is something that you need to depend upon, and you can't depend upon it to work with others and even your children if you yourself do not depend upon that truth to set you free. Inside of you, 